What's up guys, Phoenix here, and this video is going to be an updated Dragoon D deck profile for March 2016. Now, I really didn't want to make this video at this current point in time, I kind of wanted to wait a little bit, maybe see a new ban list, maybe potentially Dragon Dragoon go to 3, maybe some other options come back for us, like maybe Red Men not being limited anymore, since it's kind of been irrelevant for at least 2-3 to three years at this point, but I mean... Hey, people just kind of really, I don't want to say pestered me into doing this, but they really hammered the point home on how much they wanted to see an updated Dragoon D deck profile after my most recent combo video went live. Now, if you haven't seen that video, there will be a link for it in the description. It is a combo video that starts with Ravine Flanks, Instant Fusion, three cards, and ends you with seven cards being a plus four overall, but your opponent can't summon from the extra deck because you have a Leviton with a Dragon Buster Destruction Sword equipped to it. The Leviton is at 0-0, zero, zero, but you also have a Queen Dragon Jin and a Stardust protecting it from destruction and battle, and then you have a Red Med at full power and an Atum there also that can still use its effect later if that becomes an option. Uh, so if you are interested in that, definitely go check that video out. But anyway, because of that video, people were very interested in uh, what I was running in the deck. What cards did I cut to make room for other cards? What bricks did I remove? How am I having it functioning, you know, how am I trying to make the deck function, stuff like that. Um, and ultimately the answer to that question is I just did the same thing I try to do with any other deck that's not exactly meta defining, and that is just to optimize it as much as I can, play only cards that are combo cards or cards that don't allow your opponent to play in certain situations, stuff like that. And that's kind of what I've done with this deck as well. Any, any card in here that's not an engine or combo card um, is a card that prevents your opponent from playing. Uh, because this deck isn't one of those that can just outlast your opponents anymore. Uh, pay no attention to the side deck, because I do not build side decks for decks unless I'm either A, ex testing them extensively, or B, planning on playing them in a deck. Uh, and an event, not a deck. Ugh. Um, but both A and B are not something that I'm considering with this deck at this point. I'm not planning on playing this at any events in the future, and I'm also not testing it extensively, because I just that kind of ruins the fun and the charm of why I like it as my favorite deck. But anyway, deck list is what I would consider to be pretty standard, but that's coming from my mindset. Triple Ducks, which, you know, is obviously standard. One Black Wing Zephyros the Elite, two copies of Garuda the Wind Spirit. You play two of this because there are certain points where you can search two of them mid-combo, depending on which combo you're doing. But also you could just start with one and still have the ability to search another one mid-combo that allows you to do certain other things. And that's not, a, that's not an amount of flexibility that you get with something like Mistleton. But there are two Mistletons because Mistleton is still very good, and it's still probably my favorite card in the main deck, actually, outside of Red Med. Uh, but one copy of Leviton. We're back to the Leviton train again, making new combos with it, making new things happen, trying to lock your opponent out of the extra deck. And also, you can just kill your opponents with uh, Trident Dragon. This was definitely more important when Damage Juggler was still legal. Uh, because you could, you know, make Trident Dragon and have three attacks, and then you could have another, you know, potential four attacks on board. But, uh, still. Trident Dragon, putting out massive amounts of damage, is still something that is very much an option. But, uh, one copy of Darkness Metal Dragon, and then three copies of Phalanx, one Mist Valley Baby Rock, and one Dragon Buster Destruction Sword as the tuners for the deck. You are, you have access to both of these cards, as well as the Garudas and the Zephyros off of the Gaederg, as per usual, and yeah, this card serves no other purpose in the deck other than to be equipped with Leviton and prevent your opponent from summoning from the extra deck at any given point in the game. And the fact that Leviton can recycle itself recycle itself via, you know, Red Med bringing it back, or it can just recycle itself with its own effect via, you know, possibly doing things with, you know, Divine Lance, things of Ducks and stuff like that, this card is constantly going to be able to re-equip itself if it's still in Grave, and thus allow you to keep locking your opponent out of extra deck strats for the foreseeable future of any game that you're playing. But anyway, for spells, double Dragon Ravine, triple Chicken Game, triple Terraforming, triple Divine Lance, two cards of Consonance, one Foolish Burial, and one Soul Charge, triple Instant Fusion, and triple Upstart Goblin. Like I said, literally no nonsense. Every single card in this main deck is either a card that prevents you from playing or a card that digs you further into your deck or contributes to a combo, i.e. Terraformings, Chicken Games, Upstart Goblins, Cards of Consonances, all these cards are meant to just draw you into your combo pieces, and then your combo pieces, Triple Institution, Triple Spirit Destiny, um, or Divine Lance, rather, Triple uh, Double Dragon Ravine, I wish I could say Triple Dragon Ravine, goddamn, um, and then, you know, obviously Soul Charge being the piece de resistance of, uh, of anything you could do with a combo in this deck. But, continuing onward, the only four traps in the deck are four cards that prevent your opponent from playing, Three copies of Dragon's Bind and one Vanity's Emptiness. Now, Dragon's Bind also has a little niche interaction with uh, with the combo uh, to lock your opponent out of the extra deck in that it counts the original attack and defense 
and that's what it counts the original attack is what it applies towards what your opponent can't special summon uh, but when you do your combo you leave Leviton at 0 0 and all you need to activate this card is a card that is a dragon type monster that has 2500 or less attack and defense so this meets that requirement if it's at 0 0 with dragon buster equipped or anything equipped for that matter and you can flip this as an additional piece of that combo and then it further locks your opponent out of cards that they can special summon um, because now no longer can they not special summon from the extra deck, they can now also no longer special summon anything that is less than 2600, because it will apply Leviton's original attack even though it's at 0, zero. Something to consider. But anyway, extra deck, one Norden and one Mavelis. Occasionally Mavelis does come up to get your combos you know, started with Instant Fusion if you don't have Ducks Phalanx in those you know combination of cards that are alive, stuff like that. One Queen Dragon Jin. Two copies of a tum because you do need two now. Uh, every time you do any sort of first turn Leviton combo, you always need double a tum because you have to use one a tum to summon Red Med. Then you banish that a tum off Red Med summoning stuff back, and then you make another a tum to summon the Leviton out of the deck. It's just very, it's very simple, very standard. Uh, one Photon Strike Bouncer and one Tall Medium Seven. Uh, just this is just standard recovery nonsense. Uh, but then Strike Bouncer as well is it any deck that the uh, first turn um, Leviton combo is bad against. Um, that you are aware that you're playing against. Like, say, you're playing against Monarchs or Cosmo or something like that that doesn't use their extra deck or maybe doesn't even have one. Anytime you are playing against one of those decks, the Leviton combo, instead of making the second Atom, can literally just make Strike Bouncer and end there. And end with Stardust, Strike Bouncer, Queen Dragon Jin, and Red Med. Um, so that's just gives you a little bit of leeway and a little bit of flexibility in your combo string that is something that other combos haven't really provided in terms of things like the Rafflesia combo and whatnot. But anyway, for Synchros, triple Vajrayana, one Gaedurg, one Stardust Spark Dragon, one Stardust Dragon, one Scrap Dragon, and one Trident Dragon are all the Synchros. Literally every single one of these Synchros is a Dragon. It's able to be brought back with Red Med, thus turning Scrap Dragon into a Floater, stuff like that. If you are playing games where you're trying to outlast your opponent, then you can definitely just use Red Med to keep bringing back Scrap Dragon, doing those sorts of things. Um, everything is kind of designed to float. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the gist of it. Like I said, don't pay attention to this side deck. Um, Anti-spells are definitely not something I would consider siding in this deck, um, unless you were in a format where you knew that you were going to go first every single time. Uh, but Imperial Iron Walls, yes, definitely. These, kind of not sure about. Um, just, just overall-ish, uh, basically. Uh, because anything that you would put Anti-Spell in against, you would also just be doing the regular combo and, you know, trying to dra draw Dragon's Bind as well. Uh, so... I don't know why I'm stuttering so much in this video. I know why, because I'm trying to speak quickly and get this video done and dusted because I've got places to be. But, anyway, that is basically it for this deck profile. If you have any uh, questions, comments, concerns, leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address them. Anyway, other than that, as always guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to see more content from me. If you liked this video, definitely give it a like. Share it around to whoever you feel like knows or wants to know the information. Stuff like that. Oh my god. This is so terrible. I'm trying to force myself to speak quickly, and it's not working, and I'm ending up wasting more time. Anyway, click on that if you have not. I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps make money, and there's no reason to lie to you guys about that. If you have an ad block enabled, please disable it. I cannot express how much it helps, because this is a form of income for me, and it supports me throughout my day-to-day -day life. Links are in the description of my Facebook pages if you want to connect with me, chat with me, whatever. A uh, link to my Twitch channel if you want to follow that and get notified whenever I go on live streams. As well as a link to my Twitch Alerts donation page. If you want to support me directly and you can find it in the goodness of your heart to donate directly to me, then definitely go for it. It's not required, but it would definitely be appreciated and you would have my eternal undying gratitude. No matter how small of an amount that you give. Because every little bit helps. But, that is basically it. And that is all for this video. And as always guys, take care.